If you're watching this video, it's because you want to become a better editor. Not only do you want to be a faster editor, but you really want to stand out. A lot of people ask me questions, from the editing software that I prefer, to specific questions about After Effects and Adobe Premiere, to different tips and tricks that I've learned over my years of editing to make my workflow a lot faster. And a lot of my friends have gotten a lot of information just from watching me seeing my workflow. The inspiration for this video is to help you become a faster and more efficient editor in just five simple tips. This is by no means a beginner video. A lot of these tips and tricks are things that I have recently implemented and I've been doing this for years. When I first started in this industry, I was working a full-time job, I was in school full-time, and then I also had a part-time job on weekends, and on top of that, I decided to take on more video editing. From that, I learned two things. I learned that I had to get faster, you know, more efficient and more effective when I'm actually working because I didn't have a lot of time. And I had to make each and every edit count and make purposeful content and content that was gonna separate me from the other editors so that I could increase my rates and I could take on less work but still be financially supported in my career. A lot of these tips are about slight benefits that compound over time and end up saving you hours and possibly days in your editing career just by implementing some of these. Tip number one, use keyboard shortcuts. Now I cannot emphasize this enough. When I first started my job, I didn't really know about the Adobe Creative Cloud editing suite. I told my employer I did, so I quickly had to learn how to become proficient in these programs without them noticing that I had no idea what I was doing. The first thing I learned was keyboard shortcuts. With the right keyboard shortcuts, you're going to save time every second that you are in your editing program. It's developing your workstation and your tools to work as efficient as they possibly can. When we're editing, one hand is on a keyboard, one hand is on a mouse. And then you pretty much just stare at a screen for um, an undetermined amount of time. <laughs> keyboard shortcuts are definitely my number one tip for an easier, more efficient process. The faster you can get things done in your program, the less mentally and creatively draining it is going to be for those times that you actually wanna do the cool stuff. Now, if I spend all of my day sorting footage, I'm gonna be exhausted by the time I actually wanna put something together. So if we can limit the time spent in those earlier processes, it not only saves us time, but it saves us energy. And if you don't believe me, I'm gonna give you one very simple example that completely changed everything for me. When I open up Adobe Premiere, that's my preferred editing software. Um, you can use whatever you are comfortable with. I love the Adobe programs. They work really well together. We'll get into that later. When I'm editing, I'm constantly zooming in and out of my sequence, or in and out of my clips, in and out of my keyframes, you know, to make really precise cuts, you have to zoom in to see the details. Now, the default keys for zoom out and zoom in are the minus and plus sign on your keyboard. From a literal standpoint, yes, that makes sense. From a technical standpoint, it's inefficient. If I'm editing and I need to zoom in or zoom out, I wanna be able to do that quickly. If I just started in Premiere, I'm either gonna have to use my left hand and reach across the keyboard to hit these keys, or I'm gonna have to take my hand off of my mouse and use my right hand to zoom in and out. I learned very quickly that I had to change this. I centralized all of my most used shortcuts, effects, and keys to be in one concentrated area where I'm able to rest my hand and reach these keys quickly. I set zoom in to be X and zoom out to be Z because it still mimics the zoom in and out from the top right. It is a lot more accessible to our left hand and where it naturally rests while editing. Those few seconds I save every single time I zoom in and out adds up to minutes, adds up to hours. Game changing. I don't have time to go through my entire keyboard shortcut layout in this video, but I will be posting that in the future, so just subscribe if you wanna see that later. Tip number two, select. Selects is short form for selections. It's essentially taking the most usable parts of each of your clips and putting them into their own timeline so that you only have to choose through the best of the best. I didn't realize how uncommon this tip was until I watched my friends edit and I noticed that they were going through every single clip individually, watching it all over again, just to take a small two to five second clip from it. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you're working in a project with hundreds to thousands of clips, which are 30 to 60 seconds or longer, and you're only taking two to five seconds from it, you are literally wasting 30 to 55 seconds looking through that clip, and that is insane. That just doesn't make sense to me. Making selects is a way around this. You put all of your footage onto one single timeline, you watch it through, and you pick your favorite parts. I typically lift it onto the second video layer, and then after I've selected all of my favorite parts from the clips, I will duplicate that sequence to have a backup, and then I will ripple delete the bottom layer. 
pulling all of my selects together into one really crisp reel of all of my best footage. And from there, I can just simply use that to make my edit. If you're looking to make multiple edits from your footage, I would definitely consider making even more specific selects. For example, if I'm shooting for a music festival, I would separate the selects into things like crowd shots, dancing, DJ. If the client wants specific changes, oh, I don't like this DJ shot, I don't like this crowd shot, you know exactly where to go and find those. Or you can color code things the way you want to. That is my tip number two. Make selects and save your time while editing. Tip number three, keyframing. The word keyframing is typically associated with some sort of intricate effect. People might not necessarily think that you could keyframe every single clip. Anytime you see a video from me, I have readjusted it, rescaled, repositioned every single clip to look as best as it possibly can. It's not easy to land a picture perfect shot every single time. And that is why we have effect controls. I know the effect controls can seem really intimidating because your options almost seem limitless sometimes, but even just the minor tweaks make such a difference in the overall picture and production of your video. Especially consider rescaling if you're shooting in higher resolutions like 4K, 6K, or 8K. I have personally rescaled the exact same shot multiple times and used it in the same video without anybody noticing. There's so much resolution there that people People only end up posting to Facebook or Instagram. You can fit four 1080p screens in a single 4K frame and it just grows as you have more resolution. So definitely just try and make the most of your frame when you have a higher resolution. I've also personally scaled up a 1080p shot 900% and I have not been called out on it yet. If that doesn't paint the picture enough, I will give you one really quick example right now, just to show you how impactful a simple repositioning can be for your video. Here's a clip from an upcoming video that I'm working on with Rode. As you can see, the clip looks smooth until we put up the markers and we notice that I am slightly off center in the frame. I'm just gonna duplicate this right here to show you a before and after. Now, the first thing you wanna do is scale into your frame and then reposition the beginning of the clip to the center. Now, as we move along into this clip, we are going to slowly reposition it, and then again at the ending of the clip to make sure that it stays centered throughout the entire video. Now, you might notice that in other areas, it might slip away from center, but if you add too many keyframes, it's going to look unnatural. So as you can see, this fourth keyframe we added here actually has to be removed. If we remove this fourth keyframe, it'll look more natural than trying to keep the entire shot in the center. We're able to keep the majority of the shot in center and it looks a lot better than it did. Here is before and here's after. Now, with this repositioning, it really creates the feel of following. From the same video, I have a second clip to show you where I've re-centered myself into the frame and created suspense to the clip by zooming out. Adjusting this clip and creating this feeling was as simple as setting two keyframes. When you are going to be setting keyframes, you really want to make sure you are focusing on the beginning of the clip and the ending of the clip. As you can see here, the ending of the clip does not fit the frame that we want. All we have to do is quickly reposition the clip so I can end the clip in the center of the frame. Tip number four, warp stabilizer. Now this is a tool that I don't wanna say is underrated, but I definitely think that is underutilized, especially being built into both Premiere and After Effects. You would think that it would be used more often. Despite your shots either being in slow motion or on a gimbal, there still might be a little bit of shake to it. You spend hours and hours shooting and then more hours editing why would you not just try and guarantee your best possible output? Using the warp stabilization tool is extremely easy. All you have to do is find the clip you wanna use it on, double click or drag and drop warp stabilization from the effects tab onto your clip. It takes roughly a minute to make your video go from good to great. It should work in most cases, but I know sometimes it just makes the footage look absolutely crazy and 10 times worse. Now, thankfully, Adobe has After Effects, which is a program that is suited specifically for these cases. Adobe was smart enough to make a separate program that is dedicated specifically to effects. And the best part about it is you can just right click your clip in Premiere Pro and click replace with After Effects composition. Apply warp stabilization from the effects and presets and now you have a higher chance of getting a better output from your clip. Once it's analyzed, all you have to do is hit save and then you quit the program. And as you can see, the linked clip is now in Premiere Pro 
and you can render it out and export it while it's still in your sequence. Thank you Adobe Creative Cloud for synchronizing your programs. This was an absolutely genius idea. This is not an ad. Now tip number five, one new technique. This is not as technical of a tip necessarily, but more of advice in separating your work from other creators. In order to make sure I was progressing my learning, my creativity, and my editing skills, all within a time constraint, I promised myself that I would try out one new thing with every project that I did, whether it be in shooting or post-production. What I noticed this did was it created a single moment of climax in the video that allows your viewer or client to walk away with something that they can point out. Maybe this is the reason that they're gonna share your video. Adding a moderately difficult technique will separate you from the rest of the creators who don't spend the extra time to do it. The more you do and the more you learn, the better your skill set will be. And overall, you can continuously add up the different things that you learn, creating newer and cooler transitions that nobody has seen before. Finding inspiration for a new technique can be as easy as watching a five to 10 minute video on YouTube. And those five to 10 minutes could literally change the entire outcome of your video and the way that it's received. Now, the one thing that I must preface and ask is that you do not just completely rip off other editors. Not only does it devalue your own work, but it devalues every other video that has that same effect or transition. You're not paying homage to somebody if you literally just rip off their effect and meaninglessly throw it into your video. You are now relying on somebody else to make you creative and you are devaluing yourself as an asset. Please use it tastefully and with purpose. That is the only thing we can ask as creators. Use your inspiration to inspire others, not to rip off and copy because it does no good for anybody. Some examples of this would be the zoom transition which people associate with Sam Colder or the glitch effects that people associate with J.R. Alley. You know, they were cool at their time and now they are being just immensely overused. So take inspiration, do not completely rip off. Now maybe you're gonna take two different effects and you're gonna combine them and that could be something completely new. Put your own twist on it and the more you learn, the more you're gonna be able to push your own creative boundaries. And that is all for this video. Those are your five tips. We learned about creating keyboard shortcuts, the fastest way to find our favorite clips. We learned about simple repositioning that has a big impact, to use warp stabilization more often, and to try new things with our edits to separate ourselves from the competition. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you liked this video and you found use from it, please consider subscribing because it helps me continue to make more videos. If you had one specific tip or a couple of specific tips that you found extremely useful, please take the five to 10 seconds to comment down below so that I know what is helping you. That way I have a better perception of what's helping other creators and I can go more in depth on those in future videos. And with that, I should probably announce that I am launching an online training. I have taken all of my years of experience and condensed it into a few hours that can take you from a basic editor to an advanced editor. If you got any use out of this video, consider clicking the link in the description. Everybody who submits their email will be getting a discount and access to the pre-sale of the course. Aside from that, I've also attached a link to the Adobe editing suite. This is not an ad. This is simply if you wanted to get into editing and you were not using Adobe yet. I truly hope that you learned something from this video because the world needs more creators. And if I can help that cause in any way, I am so happy to do so. Thank you for watching and making it all the way to the end here. I really appreciate you. I will definitely see you soon.